Welcome back, it's the Clay Golem here. We're back in Foundry VTT and we're doing something slightly different. Uh, so we had a comment from Freakfire74 who was um, asking about combat. Um, and in a number of these videos where we've looked at different add-ons and bits, we've certainly done some demos of combat and things, but we've not really kind of consolidated that down uh, recently anyway and sort of just done a demo video of, a, of of combat in a kind of complete setting that's what we're doing now uh, so yeah this is for you freak fire 74 um, and for anybody else who wants to see our setup now some of you have been following along you've seen a lot of the automation stuff we've done with midi qol and stuff um, and uh, this is what we are going to kind of demonstrate however i do want to point out that there have been some changes. If I go to my manage modules, um, this is our Stormwreck Isle um, campaign, game, whatever you want to call it, uh, where we are doing all that automation. Now, in our Curse of Strahd, we're not doing automation. We're doing very, very little. It's, it's a different way of doing it. So we've got these two kind of extremes, if you like. So what have I got in this one? Um, You've seen most of this before. Obviously, you can pause the video and, and have a look at these. Uh, have I added anything in? Well, uh, a couple of videos ago, we uh, went over Chris's pre-made, which ob 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 obviously <laughs> brought in a lot of extra um, character traits and feats and all, all those things. So we've definitely got that now. Um, and one of the comments that was made in that is that the next logical thing to do was to add Gambit's pre-mades in. So I've now also got Gambit's pre-made. Uh, we haven't done a video on that and looked at that specifically. And I don't want to get into the add-ons in this video because this is about showcasing the combat. If um, after this video, if people want to know what that setup is and, and what we've actually got and what the settings are that I'm using, then yeah, I can do that. Um, you know, comments, that's what they're for. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do it if nobody's interested because it's either going to be really interesting for those who want to know those details or really boring for those who don't. So uh, let me know if you want to see that I can do that. OK, what else have we got added in here? Um, again, all the stuff we've seen before, levels. The only other thing I've added is the automatic cover calculator for levels. Again, we've not looked at that. Um, but that's in here because it's part of this full thing. I want to continue to try all that before I do a video and looking at that one. Um, duh, 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 anything else that I've got new in here? Can we see anything else? Our walled templates. So this is in to deal with a particular issue around the attacks of opportunity that come in by using um, by using Gambit's pre-mades. So it's great that that deals with attack of opportunity, but it does put templates all over the place, and apparently walled templates is the way to get rid of it. So I've had a bit of a play, and I have encountered a few problems. So before I actually demo this, one of the things you, you sharp-eyed of you might notice is that um, we use Drag Ruler. Um, let's just close this. We use Drag Ruler, which measures how far we're moving, but it's not doing it. I have found that walled templates has been giving me a lot of jip um, and after a lot of debugging having even though I've still got it installed it's fine but if I have automatically start measuring on it totally stuffs it <laughs> and it doesn't work so I'm not quite sure what the problem is there but it's a conflict between those two modules so if you get the same problem as I do have a look at that just turning that off might be the solution trust me I spent about two hours trying to find that one Okay, so what have we got in this combat here? Obviously, I've got my characters. So, uh, because... Ah, right, another thing. Because we've now got Chris's pre-mades, um, which obviously does a lot of the character things, I did go back to the DDB importer uh, and re-imported all of my player characters to make sure... Let me show you. Let's pick on Haley. Always picking on Haley, of course. Um, when we come into here, we import from here. But under automation here... Now, we had before uh, these top three, which because we had DAE, MIDI, QOL, Time's Up, Convenient Effects, <gasps> Active Auras, Active Token Effects, and Warp Gate, but we didn't have Chris's pre-made. So I've now been able to tick this one, which is going to import even more um, of those things we need through uh, Chris's pre-made. So with that active, 
I then imported all of my characters again just to make sure they were all kind of reset if you like with the latest stuff so that was something else that I needed to do uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm okay that's go away uh, have I got an active effect on you Haley? Nope, it's an inactive effect. That's fine. <laughs> Just check it. So, um, yeah, we've got a couple of different things to trial here, of course. We've got some spells to cast. We've got some beating up. So we've got uh, we've got a fighter here. We've got a wizard here. We've got a warlock. We've got uh, a barbarian. And we've got a cleric. So we've got a nice mixture here and also a bit of a mixture of monsters. It doesn't really matter. But if you recall, we did... Haley did um, get this Lightbringer uh, item that we built from scratch using a uh, builder bonus and it does additional damage to undead it does radiant damage to undead so i wanted to make sure i included some undead monsters in here and make sure all of that is going to work so let's start our combat and of course we've got our combat carousel and let's just roll all of our initiatives hundreds of them <laughs> get everybody started uh, now i'm only going to be doing this from the dm screen um, because otherwise it gets a bit cluttery if I'm trying to show you on two different screens. However, just be aware, I do have player logged in over on this side in case there's anything, and there will be, anything I want to show you from that other screen. Okay, we are kind of ready. We've got Monk's Token Bar at the bottom here. We've got all of our characters, which is nice. Let's play who starts off. We're starting off with this ghoul. So again, this is going to be a bit of a demo of what happened. So uh, our ghoul can move in here. Now, can you see this radius? around here this is showing you the attack radius for this creature so if it moves there it can't attack Sorryman. it's not close enough there it can but it can't reach Haley. so it just gives you that little aura so that you know how close you need to be to attack with it and we'll see some of our characters have got a different radius all right so we're going to charge straight up here and we're going to instantly attack uh, sorry man here so let's double click open our ghoul we can go to our features and straight away launch in with that nice <laughs> and immediately sorry man starts taking damage now what we need to bear in mind if we look at claws is that if the target is a creature other than an elf and undead it must make a constitution saving throw right this hasn't automatically asked us for that Okay, so again, we can build that in. Using build a bonus, we can absolutely add that onto the claw attack to make that happen. But we haven't. So what we can do, of course, because we've got Monk's token bar, we can go to request roll. Um, I want to add that player. I've added every player. Plank. That's okay. You can easily remove those. Uh, it's a DC 10, according to the description over here. Um, happy to show that and I can choose that that's a constitution saving throw and there we go so on Sorryman's side um, it's asking him to make that roll he has absolutely failed that roll we can see that in the chat there and just point out be paralyzed for one minute now again this is not an auto effect we would want to add this one on it's this ghoul isn't quite set up right but that's fine not everything's going to be if i was going to have lots of ghouls in this adventure i would be making sure i'd set that one up okay so you are paralyzed aren't you sir uh which one's paralyzed that one there we go so he's now paralyzed fantastic he's out <laughs> already <laughs> only just started all right so who's next we've got a die wolf now i'm going to keep clearing this chat just to keep it nice and neat and tidy for you so you can see what's happening um, I'm a little bit annoyed that that template hasn't automatically gone away. Why not? Why has that ghoul's template stayed? Oh, there we go. It's gone again. Okay, a little bit glitchy apparently. Uh, okay, here we are. Dire wolves go. Let's charge in and, and again. So, right. So, bigger creature has a longer reach. It can actually go to here and attack Haley from there. Okay, so it doesn't need to be right up close. All right, and it's still showing us what where he can attack. Uh, and let's do that bite attack on Haley. Interesting. Target's 10 feet away. The range is only 5. Ah. Well, that's not quite what I was... Uh... So, again, this is why we do it. Little, little error there. Not a big problem. 
um, we can do that uh, attack there. Now the reason why this is paused is because on the other screen it's asking if Haley wants to use her um, shield reaction, which again is something that's not quite working right. Uh, I was hoping that would be fixed, but it's not. Um, but there we go. So we've made our attack here. Haley has been hit. Haley needs to make a strength saving throw, which we can click that for there. Just a normal one, please, Haley. And we can see that she's failed this as well. So again, we can look at the description. DC will be knocked prone. So Haley has taken a kick in. It's not going well for these guys, is it? And she's knocked prone immediately. There we go. So again, with that attack on this direwolf, this bite, we absolutely can automate that further so that we make the bite attack. If it succeeds, it forces the target to make a strength check. If it fails it, it automatically makes it prone. We can absolutely do that, and we've done that um, with some few things before. It's just I haven't done it with this one. Okay, who's next? All of the monsters. <clears throat> All right, so zombie, come in and uh, let's uh, come up here and we'll have a go at Nundro. Uh, again, it's leaving these templates on, which is not supposed to. There we go, that's better. Um, it's not leaving them on on the player's view, I would point out, only on the DM's view. Okay, so uh, let's slam Nundro if we can. I haven't cleared my chat again. We failed to hit, so we do, it rolls its damage automatically, but it has failed to hit, which is quite nice for once. <laughs> Incapacitating all of my players. Finally, right, one of the players gets to go, and we're up with a wizard. So, what can we do, or what do we want to do with our wizard? Well, I think the smart move is possibly to uh, start attacking some of these things especially some of the things that are attacking these two down here one's on the floor um, about to be eaten by a die wolf let's have a look through these spells what could we do to help hmm i know what we could do we're going to move to here okay so we're not in melee range of anything and we're going to cast a ganza scorcher so as you can see, I now have a, by scrolling my wheel, I can now decide where I want that. Um, and I'm going to cast it from this square south. And it will pretty much hit all of those guys. I need to be careful not to hit my own friends, of course. So let's give that a go. Uh, again, watch the chat, see what happens. So the nice thing is it did hit all three, or rather it attacked all three of those. And you can see in the chat there, it's tried to make saving throws for everybody. Well, the ghoul made it, uh, the die wolf didn't, and the zombie didn't. So um, we've, <clears throat> excuse me. So the ghoul has, has uh, made his saving throw, the others haven't. And we can see the damage that's been inflicted on these creatures based on that. So the ghoul took three, because it's half of seven, um, and the other two took seven each. There we go. So we cast the spell, we've got the template, we've got the animation, everything we wanted. Nice work, sir. Uh, now it's got, <clears throat> excuse me. So he's got this template on there because that's just going to last until next turn. That will automatically turn off. Okay, who's go next? Of course, it's the ogre's go. That's just what we want, isn't it? After, uh, <laughs> after our mage foolishly moving into line we're going to move up here our ogre zombie is going to probably do an awful lot of damage now quickly popping over here can you see we've now got two different things here i'm going to click these quite quickly do i want to use my brace maneuver yes i do use that ability um, and therefore i can do this so i'm going to explain what that was in a moment but of course it's got a timer and some of you obviously will know exactly what that was all about. All right, so that's why I've got that other screen open. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We can see in the chat, so the ogre's not had his turn, that Baldrick has the uh, maneuvers brace. So if we just open this up, this is one of his class traits that he has. Uh, so maneuvers, parry, etc. But he's got brace. So when a creature moves into range for him, 
so it's, it's i'll read it uh, when a creature you can see yes we can see it moves into the reach you have with the melee weapon he's using a pole arm so he's obviously got that extra reach which is why he can do it from where he is which is great because that's testing that reach weapon exactly what we would want um, you can use your reaction to spend one superiority die and make one attack against a creature using that weapon. If the attack hits, add the superiority die to the weapon's damage roll. So it did move in, and that's why I had to do it quickly on the other screen, because that reaction that he took, it times out. So I needed to do it quite quickly. So yes, he decided he was going to use that, absolutely. And then he made his Howard attack, which was successful, and he's done damage. And you can see his damage quite small here it's 1d10 plus 3 plus an additional d8 which is his superiority die so that has worked perfectly as we'd want it to and if you look at his token here you can see that he's used his reaction there so his reaction has been used for this round so we can't do that again so that all worked exactly how we want it to all right but actually it's this ogre zombies go who's just been mashed on his way in um We've still got this tempo outline, just to uh, prove the point. It's not showing on here. So the players aren't seeing that, only the DM is, so it's not really that much of a problem. Okay, morning star to the wizard, which is very unfortunate. Yep, that's going to hurt, of course. 12 points of damage. Excellent. And of course, now he's stuck in melee range. So we're going to be able to look at attack of opportunities in a moment. Right, end the ogres go. We've now got... A uh, little rat face down here. His go. Uh, who should we attack? Let's charge in here. Now, we did not get another attack of opportunity from Baldrick, even though I've moved within range of his pole arm because he's already used it. So it's not triggered that, which is, again, exactly what we would like. Let's clear our chat. Uh, let's attack Nundro because, you know, Nundro's not been attacked yet. And again, I know we've got these templates that are kind of showing on here, but they're not on the player's version. So uh, let's do let's do a short sword act. Nice and straightforward. Didn't hit him. Rolls damage anyway. We get a little animations. No harm, no foul. Let's just uh, leave it as that. So while well, we've got multi-attack, of course, it makes two attacks, one of which can be a bite. So let's make our bite attack. Also missed. We get our animations and everything else, which is beautiful, just what we want. Clear our chat. Now, I'm just going to quickly do that just to clear those templates because it makes it easy for you guys. Uh, who's go next? It's Haley's go. Right, so we all know slightly weird mechanics, even though she's in the middle of being mauled by a direwolf, according to the rules, she can use half a movement just to stand up, regardless of the fact that she's currently being eaten by a wolf. <laughs> I've always found that a slightly odd rule, um, <clears throat> that it's so easy to get up from prone. You just do it. It's half your movement, whatever. Um, but obviously she now doesn't have those disadvantages from laying down. Laying down. <laughs> so having a little snooze. Okay, now, <clears throat> Haley is actually going to... First of all, she's going to move here. And she's going to attack this ghoul. Because I want her to be using her light bringer, which does extra damage to undead. Now again, she didn't go out of range of the dire wolf, so she's not provoked an opportunity. Um, let's use that light bringer. Let's make that attack. We get some sound, we get some animation, and that's because of the fact that she's attacked a ghoul, which is undead, and her mace does extra damage for that. So we can see, yes, yeah, she made her attack roll. Then we did d6 plus 3 plus 1 plus an extra 1d6 radiant damage, uh, which is lovely. Thank you very much. Um, and you can just see, actually, you've got the calculation here. Uh, 8 bludgeoning damage plus uh, 3 radiant. Okay, so that's in there. Nice. That works. Good. It's another thing we wanted to test. Now, Haley also has... So she's not used her bonus action yet. We know that because it hasn't got the little icon for her. Uh, and one of the things that she's got is Shield Master. And she can, as a bonus action, do the Shield Master Shove. So we're going to try that right now. So she's going to click Shield Master Shove. It's used her bonus action. We get a little animation. And she's used it on the Ghoul. Now, this is a contested roll. So 
at the bottom here, I'm going to, so just down at the bottom here, if you can see where I'm wiggling, I'm going to go to the what looks like the two people contested role. Because Haley is selected and the ghoul is targeted, it's bringing those two up. And it's a athletics v athletics roll. Let's make those rolls. The ghoul succeeded. So the ghoul won in that instance and therefore is not knocked prone. Okay, that's fine. Um, but it's showing us that she's used her bonus action. Okay, let's move on. Let's clear our chat. And it's now Bordrix. Let's just quickly do that to get rid of that template. It's now Bordrix go. Okay, now he has obviously a few things he can do. Action surge, second win. So we can try those. Um, let's stay where we are um, and attack that wear rat. We should be able to reach it from here because we've got a pole arm. Let's check. So, uh, Halbert is letting us attack, which is correct. We can do our damage. Um, okay, so we just did 12 slashing damage. We did hit it. It's not taken any damage. Uh, da, 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 da. Now, is that because it has damage immunities to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashes from attacks that are not magical or silvered? So that is correct, and we would ex we would not expect to see it take damage. So that's why it's not taken damage. It's automatically taken into account exactly as we would want lovely jubbly okay so what we can do instead is switch target because this one's also in range sorry make sure baldrick selected and we can use our bonus action for our polearm master against a separate target perfectly acceptable and we can hit that and do damage which we have which is lovely and we can't now use our uh oh we can use action surge can't we because uh you it's not a bonus action to use it you can just use it can't use second wind, but I can bonus action. Uh, oh, why? Hang on a second. What do you mean it's run out? We've got one of one. Now I countered this issue somewhere before. Um, apologies. This one has not gone quite as smooth as usual. Let's edit. And I encountered this problem with something else where it was saying, "Yeah, what's this resource consumption? Tertiary value." And it might be because it's bought in the wrong thing. Uh, da, 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 da. Attribute. Item uses, surely. Try that again. Lost it. That's better. So, I'm not sure if you've, you've followed that. It was just a little issue with its resource consumption. So second wind action surge, that's what it should have been on, of course. It should have been on action surge, so it uses that up. Um, oops. <sighs> Item uses action surge. Yeah, that's what we needed it to be on. So that will actually work now. Little fix there on the fly. If you encounter the same thing, it's often just something like that. It's using the wrong resource. It comes up and says, oh, you haven't got enough resource of this. It's like, oh, well, I have. It's probably pulling the wrong resource. I've had that a couple of times. I think I've debugged most of them. <laughs> but we keep finding an extra one. Of course we do. All right, now I've used Action Surge. I can actually do my next Halberd attack against that zombie uh, once again, if that's what I wish to do. Um, so, yes, do it. And we can do some more damage, get a little animation. We do our damage. Lovely jubbly. So, so far, we've had a couple of little glitches, but it's pretty much worked as expected. Okay, Black Bear, where are you going? Well, you're going to come in here and have a go at Haley. Okay, we're going to pretend Horriman's not uh, not completely knackered for the moment. <laughs> right, come here, you. Target Haley, uh, and we're just going to go with a which is going to go with the claw attack here. I need to clear my stuff down here, don't I? Right. Uh, claw attack, please. 
failed to hit and of course we've got a multi attack here one uh, one with its bite and one with its claws so we can do a bite as well yum 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 ouch that's gonna hurt all right now Haley is getting the option of using her uh, shield master evasion but that's not what this is for so I need to fix that so of course she's failed to use it it's carried on with the combat um, she's failed to use it because it's not applicable she shouldn't get that option uh, and she's taken lots of damage and automatically she's got her bloodied um, little indicator on all right we haven't managed to make it through an entire round yet um, clear that log we got Nundro. Nundro is up. So what's Nundro going to do that's a little bit interesting? He could just hit with his Warhammer, but we've seen that kind of stuff before. Um, he let's cast a spell or two. Uh, what shall we do? Right, let's get some range. So I'm going to, one um, bonus action, Misty Step. So he's used it. Can you see the blue circle he's got? He can Misty Step anywhere within that blue circle that he likes. Let's be fairly foolish and stick him down there. Boom, teleports, used his bonus action. Lovely, that works perfectly. Now he's got some space, he can do something else. Um, let's do, well, let's do an Eldritch Blast, of course. Uh, see if we can get rid of this. Yeah, let's see if we can get rid of this. Oh, who to do? Let's get rid of this. Oh, it just doesn't matter. It's a demo. <laughs> Here we go. We get a little effects and everything else, and off that goes. Um, and it, we did our damage to the ghoul. It's been injured a bit more. Okay, brilliant. So that worked. End of his go. Uh, we're now onto Sorryman, who of course is still paralysed. He didn't even get to do anything. Um, and if we look. We're still paralysed. It hasn't got the countdown on there, which is interesting because that should be counting down for one minute. But he's kind of stuck on that. Um, and the last one to go is this bugbear, who of course is going to immediately come down here. Before he has his attack, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Get out of the way, bugbear. I'm going to cheat a little bit. Um, and I want Nundro to cast something like Hellish Rebuke. Not on. <laughs> Let me undo that. <clears throat> I want you to cast Hellish Rebuke on yourself. Okay, so you should be. It should be an effect you have on yourself. I haven't accidentally put it on here, have I? No, it's just wounded. Okay, so he's casting Hellish Rebuke on himself because that means. Oh, no, that's a reaction one, isn't it? Of course. Silly boy. That's a reaction. Ignore me. Okay, what I am going to do is I'm going to remove his reaction from here just so that we know that he's got that available uh, and pretend he doesn't use his bonus action as well. Okay. Right, so this bugbear moves in. Okay, and he's going to attack here. Let's clear the chat. Do you know what? Uh, I know you're probably thinking he's fumbling through this. It's really challenging trying to talk my way through combat while playing both sides at the same time. It's not as easy as you might think. Okay, let's do a Morningstar attack. Something nice and simple here. We're going to do eight points of damage, except we didn't hit, so that's fine. I'm going to do another attack because I would like this to hit. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. That definitely hits. Uh, and there we go. We've taken silly amounts of damage, which is all good. Um, but it did not. It did not give us the opportunity to um, respond with Hellish Rebuke. So Hellish Rebuke, one reaction, which you can take in response to a damage within a, from a creature within 60 feet. That bugbear definitely is. Um, you point your finger at a creature uh, that damaged you, is moaned is momentarily surrounded by flames. So that hasn't worked. So again, it's another little one. We're testing all of these things. Okay, the combat itself is working fine. It's just the odd little spell that's not quite working. That should have given him a prompt um, to see if he wanted to use rea his reaction or not. That's fine. Right, another thing I do want to test is this bugbear's go. Let's just clear that up. What happens when this bugbear walks away from Nundro? Over on the other screen, this is 
attack of opportunity. It's asking Nundro if he wants to do it. I can choose the weapon. I mean, obviously, he's going to do what he's normally doing. Uh, and he can make his attack of opportunity. Okay, so just go back to the DM screen here. It's saying that he's going to attack this bugbear. Nundro rolls his dice and fails too. Okay, so the attack of opportunity thing is working as well. Nearly ended the video without showing that bit. That would have been a bit silly because that's one of the key things that we've looked at at automating that is new. So just to show you that again, um, with the bugbear, let me do, yeah, let me bring this. There we go, sorry about that, that's uh, much better. We can now see a bit better from both screens here. So we've got uh, Nundro on the, uh, on the left over here and we've got uh, sorry we've got Nundro on the right over here so this is the view and we've got the DM's view on the left here so when this bugbear attempts to walk away I need to have Nundro's chat open so you can see that um, when this bugbear attempts to walk away nothing happens because Nundro's used his reaction if we walk um, this way and we go up to Sorryman and we attempt to walk past Sorryman it does not allow Sorryman an attack of opportunity. Good, <laughs> because it shouldn't. But it does say, hey, look, does we, do we want to use our, um, uh, our maneuvers to get our attack of opportunity? Yes, we can. I don't know why I've got it twice. Dear Lord, that got messy, didn't it, very quickly. Okay, but it didn't ask Sorryman if he wanted to take an attack of opportunity because he can't, uh, because obviously he's um, he's paralysed. Um, let's open Baldrick. Let's remove his uh, reaction. Let's pretend he hasn't used his reaction, which is all good. Let me just clear that one as well. But again, so when we move away and run away from Baldrick, we should see him trying to do that again. There we go. It's come up again because he's moving out of his range. So even though he's already he's a 10 foot away, because it's a halberd, he can still get to do this. And therefore, uh, Baldrick becomes uh, a master of battlefield uh, crowd control, if you like. OK, sorry, got a little bit messy at the end there. Um, but as you can see, we've got really good automation there. We've got spells going off that seem to work perfectly well. We've already tested things like mage armor and stuff before. We know they work. Uh, we've got attacks of opportunity are working. We've got ranged weapons, or rather reach weapons, working. We've got um, weapons that do extra damage to undead. We've got immunities on creatures that are automatically being taken care of and things like that. So nice little showcase. Covered a whole range of stuff there. Sorry, it's a bit messy, a bit confusing. It's quite hard to do it on my own. Um, doing both sides and talking to you. Need three personalities all at once. I struggle with having one. Um, but I hope that's been interesting. I hope that's shown you some of the, some of the things that perhaps um, you haven't kind of seen before or how that's worked. If you're particularly interested in seeing what all my settings are, do leave a comment in the below, in the, you know, in the comments. Yeah, you know where they go. Below in the comments. Um, otherwise, I won't bother because um, it's going to be a bit fiddly. And if you're not interested, what's the point? Uh, but if you are, let me know and we'll do that. Absolutely. Um, and we're going to do another one like this um, over the next few days that is looking at the combat that we're doing as part of the uh, the um, Curse of Strahd campaign without any automation, just flat combat in Foundry so that you guys can compare the two and see which you like best. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching. Leave a like, subscribe and comment. Bye. Bye.